If you've been watching my other videos, you'll know that I like to use Permanent Patch 101 as a texture base. It works really nice for creating texture, and then I put acrylic paint down over that. Today, I decided to try something different. It's called Permanent Patch 102, and the only difference is that it has a bit of a grainy texture, so I think that'll be kind of fun to use. I'm also going to build up a rocky surface by using regular joint compound. Now this should harden up a lot more than the permanent patch. The permanent patch is like a cross between a plaster and a, um, a caulk. So it's really nice. It's a little bit flexible. In this video that you're watching now, this is a little piece showing my previous painting that I, I used these new items on and I was really happy with the results gave me kind of a rocky surface and um, I thought it was really interesting and then I layered on top of that layers of uh, Liquitex medium varnish. Okay so to get started I'm going to use I think I'll start with the permanent patch 102 and then um, that will be this one and I'll probably use, I think I'll use this to just put down over the whole thing. I don't have to put extra layers of gesso on here because I'm just putting the permanent patch all over the whole thing. After I get the permanent patch 102 on there, if I'm happy with that, once it dries then I'll go back and build up some bigger rocky areas with the joint compound. And then what I use for glazing is the Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish. So I'm going to start now with the um, basic texture. And if this starts to ever dry out on you, you can always add a little bit of water. Over time, um, I found that the lid doesn't always go back on real well, so I keep it in a Ziploc bag. This is kind of interesting. I like this. I tried using spackle and it really didn't work because it didn't stick to the canvas. I wasn't happy with it. I like this. Now the video uh, photo that you see on the screen there is a painting that I did of a snowman and a Christmas tree. And even if you're not interested in doing a Christmas tree, I highly recommend looking at that video because it shows how I used the Permanent Patch 101 to make that tree. Now, there are all sorts of actual artist gels, but I kind of found that I like using some of these things that I just pick up at Lowe's or Home Depot. They can be a much better price than what you get at the um, at, at an art store. Now this is different than the the smoother Permanent Patch 101 because it kind of builds up more, but it has um, it can have a little bit of a rough texture too. But I think this is almost going to be easier to paint. We'll see. Very interesting. I think I'd like to do a very large seascape using this. So now I need to let that dry. Okay, now I'm ready to put on my um, actual joint compound. And for that, I'm using the Dry Dex by DAP. And it goes on pink, so don't be alarmed about the color. It will dry white. Now, I have to kind of think about the design that I want. Um, in my previous one, I just kind of made some random rocks. I think I'm going to do a different color scheme on here too. I'm going to have some browns and beiges, maybe a little bit of greenery so it looks a little bit like moss on some rocks. Of course I might change my mind as I go along like I often do, but that's the idea that I'm starting out with. I should have also mentioned that when I use the um, the sure Stick um, Permanent Patch 101, I sometimes add paint directly to it before I put it down. You can do it that way. Um, this I did not add any paint to. That is the color of the actual um, Permanent Patch 102. But um, we'll see how it paints. Again, the idea here is to have something like 
um, maybe like a, if you were out in nature hiking along and this was a rock wall that you came to. And I might even put some water drizzling down. I think that might be kind of pretty. If you wanted a sharp edge on something, you could even take a straight edge and lay it like this and then and then put your patch down. And that keeps it flat up there. I looked into using plaster and I decided against it because there's a lot more toxicity to it and I just didn't want to have to worry about that. Okay, I have let this dry overnight and the um, actual joint compound came out really nice. It, it's hardened up, so it's more like a plaster. And the um, Permanent Patch 102 also is nice and dry now. So I'm ready to start painting. And for that, I decided to use a little bit larger brush because I can kind of get down into the areas a little bit easier. And I'm using a lot of earth tones and I'll list the um, colors that I'm using up on the screen for you to see. And they're all Grumbacher except the um, ultramarine blue happens to be golden and the green gold is golden. So you can use just about any mix of colors you like. I like to use earth tones and then I throw in a few other colors like the ultramarine blue the Alzerian Crimson just to kind of dress it up a bit because in nature you really do see other colors. Um, I have this here to show you what can happen when you drizzle on the um, glaze, which I will use when I'm finished here um, to be the water dripping down and things and kind of give it a more glazed look to it. That was the Liquitex uh, Gloss Medium and Varnish, which I showed earlier in the video. But there are many areas here where I just drizzled the um, varnish vertically. And I don't know how well that shows in the video there, but um, it really adds a lot of dimension. So when you're looking at it, it looks like layers of trees and things. And this type of thing doesn't photograph nearly as well as what you can see in person. And the same thing with this. So I'll get video of it from different angles when I'm finished so you can really see the dimension. These are the colors. I just use a paper plate. It's inexpensive. I can throw it away when I'm finished. And I dip my brush in the water and then I just dab it off on a napkin. That too is inexpensive. I get those in big stacks at places like Walmart. So now I just kind of need to decide where I want different colors. It's just a matter of laying the colors down. I actually forgot my Payne's Gray. If you've watched many of my videos, you'll see that I use a lot of Payne's Gray. I rarely use black because it's just too harsh. Payne's Gray looks black, but it's actually very, very dark blue. It's a, it's a gray blue. It's a beautiful color. Makes nice shadows for natural looking areas. You can see how dark that is. I want to have it look like there's a little bit of moss growing on some rocks. You don't have to be real careful here because this is kind of a, not exactly an abstract, but you don't want to be too perfect with things either. Just kind of toss it out there. And you can add whatever colors you like and it can still be very much like nature. And uh, that brings in maybe colors of the room you're going to put your painting in. This is a little Alzerian Crimson, and you can see that it, it's quite red, but it's not a brilliant bright red. So it looks nice as far as being a rather natural looking color as well. I'm really happy with this 102 wall patch. And when I'm picking up colors, I grab a little one color and a little of another, and I just start kind of 
placing it on there and then if I want something else I just grab that and throw it in so go ahead and play around with it and you can see how quick it goes you don't want to think about it too much you just want to get it down there and that's the Payne's gray again there it's quite dark so you can see you don't really need black and then I whatever colors I had on my brush I just left them on there this green I wasn't sure if I was going to use it or not I got it out just in case I wanted to it's this is hooker's green it's a very bright green so it it goes a long way you have to be very careful with it but I can maybe mix it in with a little Payne's green see that darkens it up quite a bit then I can put some in here and then after that dries I can go back and add lighter tones and when you have a lot of texture like this when you're all finished if you take it and turn it different ways and look at it you'll see where you might have missed some places And so even though this is kind of an abstract type of a painting, we want color balance. People ask me why I use a lot of dark colors. Well, growing up in the Northwest, that's what I saw. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. Um, but, you know, it does have its long, somewhat gloomy winters. But to me, that's kind of a cozy look. I like the looks of the mountains. This type of painting goes pretty quickly. And um, I'll probably make several like this because I'm really enjoying this. I think I'll make some more with some flowers, maybe some vines and things coming down through it. And then I can switch them up, put different ones on the wall at different, <clears throat> different seasons of the year. So if you continue watching I'm sure I'm sure in the future you'll see more videos along this line I like that blue I like the way these colors are coming together that's kind of a pretty grayish color right there kind of a blue gray and my brush is getting slightly dry that doesn't work real well so you don't want it too wet or too dry if you see it dripping then you have it too wet and if it's not really going down paint isn't really leaving the brush then it's too dry if I have my rocks a little bit lighter in color and I have a little bit of an outline around them using the Payne's gray here that kind of helps set them off besides having them elevated I don't want the color to be just like the background and just like if you're doing any kind of a painting and you want a subject matter to show up the background needs to be quite different than the actual subject itself and that holds true on an abstract as well Now, if you wanted to, you could you could think about a light source on a painting like this too, um, where you think your light might be coming from, and think about that. I'm kind of thinking. I always think of my light as up here, so I have my my darker edges on this side. That's where I'm adding my paint's gray, and um, it's kind of the way that I. I, I made these pieces work well for that because the bigger edge is over here and it'll create a natural shadow as well. This is a little bit of ultramarine blue with Payne's gray mixed in with it. I've shown this in other videos that I've done. This is warm gray and this is Titan buff. The warm gray is by Grumbacher and the um, you can get it in different brands but I happen to use Grumbacher the um, titan buff is golden <clears throat> and um, this titan buff is like white except um, it's unbleached the titan buff is a little bit more to the yellow i don't know how well that shows up in the camera but i like to use both i tend to go towards warm gray more but i like to mix in the um, titan buff 
so I'll sometimes even just grab a little of each and I tend to put my the corner of a brush in one and then I go right ahead and dip it into another one and the way that it comes off the brush works really nicely it's quite natural then you get little accidents like that's a little bit darker there that happened to hit there but I like that that's telling me maybe I want to do my rocks a little darker I don't really know yet and one thing to keep in mind when you are working on um, a surface like this actually any canvas if you start fooling around with it too much when it hasn't yet dry your brush can actually lift paint off and it's kind of wanting to do that so I'm going to let it dry now kind of like how some of this there's just a sudden dark next to a light like that and instead of blending that I, I like that there's a distinction there so let me come back later and kind of beef that up in some areas I, I really do like that while this front face was drying I went ahead and painted the sides I didn't like the light color that it was before so I went ahead and painted it again and this time I painted it a combination of Payne's gray raw umber and a little bit of white mixed in Payne's gray all by itself is very very thin it's almost as if you added a lot of water or glaze to it it doesn't go on very opaque and the other thing um, is when I work with this background um, texture a lot of times when I've finished a little bit of it shows through even though I had covered all the areas there's little specks and things that show through and being that this is a rock face I think that's okay I don't have to worry about every last little spot showing and I'm going to be glazing the whole thing with some color anyway and so I'll decide later if I need any little touch-ups so the first thing that I need to do is to paint my rocks themselves I haven't done that yet and I do like the way that some of this is dark and then I have it dark on this side kind of like a shadow so I may start out a little bit darker here and then fade out on this side I want them to stand out and I want them to look fairly realistic if I had some mica powder I could even come back later and sprinkle a little bit of mica powder on there so I'm going to start out with some pain gray with a little bit of white Just kind of getting a base coat down now to give me an idea of what I want the rock to look like. Now this is just a little bit of um, Alzir and Crimson here to see what that looks like. You can always go back and kind of study rocks and things and get an idea too of what what you want. color I'm using right now is burnt umber which isn't as dark as raw umber with a little bit of white mixed in kind of like that look almost looks like it's broken there
I'm bringing in some burnt sienna now. It's a brown with a little bit of red in it. I don't really want I don't really want alzirin crimson in my rocks because it's just a little bit too red. So um, it's kind of pretty having just a little touch of it there, and I, I like it up there. But I think down here I'm going to keep to the browns, and so this is. This is the burnt umber, which is a deep brown. This is the um, this is the burnt sienna, and raw umber is a deeper brown again. It's almost black. So we'll see how this looks kind of mixed in there. That kind of sets that off a little bit different than the background, and it's automatically coming out variegated just because. As I showed earlier, I dip my brush in different paints at the same time. It's not like I'm coming through and drawing in all these different little colors and stripes of color. They just automatically show up. So I never really know what I'm going to get until it happens. I put a little bit of the um, raw umber with the burnt sienna to make it slightly darker. That is this color here. Just kind of adds a bit to it and I, I like that. White is really nice because white this white is very opaque and it is very good for coverage. If you ever have paint that seems a little bit too thin if you just toss in a bit of white, uh, you'll get it to flow or go down better. Can't forget my little rock down here. Put something around out here just to kind of get that started. Give him some definition. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I will let that dry. It has to be thoroughly dry, and then I will um, go back and think about my varnish. I think I will varnish over the whole thing first, and then I'll add my little drizzles of varnish that will look like uh, maybe some water dripping down the rock wall. I realized while I was watching my video and doing some editing that I had actually changed the orientation of the painting at some point. I started out with it this way, with the idea that I would have water dribbling down here, hitting that rock and coming on down and dribbling this way, but at some point when I first painted the sides early on, I ended up with it this way. So from there on, I painted it with this orientation. And that's fine. Um, I actually like it this way. I put the shadows of the rock on this side, so I can't change it at this point because if I put it back like this, the shadows would be up on top. It probably wouldn't really be like that in nature because the light source wouldn't be coming from below if this was an actual rock wall out near a waterfall or something. The light source would be coming from above. So I will leave it like this and it'll still work. I can bring some water down here and it can kind of drizzle off this way and meander over here, hit that rock and come down. I'm not going to have a lot of water drips. I just wanted to kind of give a feeling of a few little drips. To do that, I have my handy six mil syringe. You could use 
what people use for basting turkeys or something. I happened to get this from a friend of mine who uses this for um, some medical purposes that she has. And um, it's really nice for this type of thing. So I'm going to tint my varnish because otherwise my drips won't really show up too much. This background was all put down with a wide brush, about two inches, and it's completely clear. It's just clear varnish. Now, if you didn't want a shiny surface, you could use the same thing, but it comes in a matte finish. I wanted this to look like a, a wet wall, so I purposely used the gloss. And for the water tint, what I'm going to do is I will tint it first and then I'll draw it up in the syringe. We'll see how that goes. It does not take much. Uh, water is actually fairly clear, but like I said, it just won't show if I um, if I don't add a little something to it. The texture of it will show, but I'm thinking that I'm going to add just a tiny bit of tint. I put this one here because I'm experimenting with doing some space type scenes. And with this, I use clear varnish that was just slightly tinted. And that way it's, it's fairly translucent. This is a little bit heavier here. And in space, these would be gases mostly. So you would want to be able to see through it. This is little bit too heavy so I think I'm going to try adding another layer and once I get this technique down I may make a video of that so I don't need much color I think that I will take a little bit of blue now this is cerulean blue which is quite deep and I think it'll be okay if I use just a tiny dab I don't want bright blue water coming down. I just want the water to be able to be seen. So I'm taking just a tint worth. Tiny, tiny dab. Maybe I'll even add a little bit of a little bit of this green to it just to kind of tone that down. So I have a color that's not very bright. And then I mix that in with the varnish and you can see that the color is more than you might think. Now for doing this type of dripping I could just use a brush like this. And let that just drizzle down and like I was saying before this doesn't show um, in photos and in the video nearly as well as it does in real life but um, because in real life you see all the amazing texture here but I want to show you how it would work with this so I'm going to go ahead and try this I like to try all kinds of different things. So I got a little bit in there. And I'm going to flip it this way. Could let some go that way. could even just let that run naturally. If I put it like this, it'll just automatically dribble. I got a lot of air sucked up in with that. It takes a little bit of strength to pull up on these syringes, but I'm getting some air here. But this gives you the idea. I could have put more in there. And I 
think that's about all that I need. And this will dry mostly translucent. You won't really see a whole lot of it. So I think I like that. And we'll see how this dries. I don't really want these little bubbles in it. Just want. So I think I like that. So I'm going to let that dry now. I also want to mention when you're working with varnish like this, you want to be careful where it drips down below. Um, it can actually cause your piece to stick to the easel and things. So you want to kind of keep it moving a little bit. Here's a close up of my dripping water. This shows the varnish completely dry and you can see that the bluish green tint that I added is now fairly translucent. It's not really too bright. I'm, I'm actually very happy with the results. It's just a very nice color that is just enough so that you can see the water drips. So I plan on doing several more projects like this, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching my video and please subscribe to my channel.